mistakes do screenwriters make with structure? Invariably, screenwriters are failing to tell a story. They're failing to realize that structure is a way to maximize the impact of their story um, and that they are ending up presenting a situation instead of telling a story. So the, my method is a way for them to identify the eight elements that are required to tell a story, to put them all on a one page form and to see how structure can work for them, not against them, uh, in order to help them find the most surprising and satisfying paths for their story. So it's almost as if new screenwriters or screenwriters that haven't mastered structure are almost like recounting, um, like for a deposition, and they're, they're sort of recounting the, just the facts instead of actually putting flavor and flair in the character's voice? I think there can be resistance to thinking that structure is going to somehow inhibit them, you know, that it's going to keep them from finding their voice, when in fact it's quite freeing. All it is, it's, you know, it's, it's um, you know, when people study improv, um, improv comedy is not just people running around crazy on stage, right? Structure is a big part of it. Understanding the structures behind um, different improv scenarios allows the performers to find these interesting paths. It allows them to free themselves. Um, so they need just a little bit of structure in order to discover those moments. But without them, you're going to end up floundering. Right. So what is the voice of the character? I mean, I think about when I listen to, let's say, Margaret Atwood or um, Alice Munro read one of their stories. You know, there's a very distinct, you know, you feel that that person's real. It seems like such an, it's such a very vague thing, like the character voice, but it's so important. How does somebody kind of like bring it down and make it tangible? Well, um, when I talk about voice, I'm not talking about the character's voice. I'm talking more about the writer's voice, ah. that the writer's voice needs to come through. And that comes through in everything, all of the elements. It comes it through in your word choice. Um, in the way you choose to describe action, um, in you, the choice of the structure and the story and, and the characters, all of the elements work together are going to contribute to you discovering your voice. And your voice is what makes you unique as a writer, um, what makes it more than just plot, uh, that there's something unique. Um, and ultimately, that's what screenwriters are are selling uh, of themselves is that they have a, a really unique voice um, that uh, captures the imagination of the reader and makes us experience it like a movie and not feel like we're reading a short story. Ah, so it's the writer's voice. The writer's voice. Not the yeah. character's voice, mm -hmm. not the protagonist's. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So finding the writer's voice, okay, that I can see where. Can the writer have too much of their own voice? Can it, is it good to vary their style and their voice? Writers can definitely get in their own way in the beginning. And that's why in the beginning, um, you know, the real screenwriting 101 uh, approach is, tells you to stick to what is seen and what is heard, right? And, and that's, that's what we teach beginners because we, we want to start training readers to writers to rethink from what you might have learned from writing prose, which can be very internal, where we're getting inside characters' heads. You don't really do that in screenwriting, at least, you know, we're, we're generally not going to hear the characters' thoughts, literally, unless you use voiceover, and voiceover is an advanced tool. Um, uh, but as you become a more experienced writer, you're going to be, you should experiment more with breaking rules and with um, not worrying about sticking to only what is seen and heard and finding ways to discover your voice in, as a writer so that when a reader reads you, it doesn't violate the rules of screenwriting. It still is something that we can imagine in a movie, but it brings the words to life in such a way um, that engages the reader because readers are human. Ultimately, we want to be delighted. We want to be charmed by your writing. Um, so ultimately, I think to distinguish yourself, you're going to want to explore your voice and become more charming as a writer. In the beginning, though, you're going to 
get in your own way if you're doing that too much uh, until you've sort of trained your brain to stop, uh, to, to think more naturally about what is being seen and heard and more naturally about seeing everything as a movie. Um, but voice is something that you definitely are going to need to develop along the way if you want to distinguish yourself as a screenwriter. What about getting in your own way in terms of copying someone else's voice unintentionally? So if I'm devouring all these William Goldman scripts and I'm just trying to really sink into them and then I somehow end up writing in his style, emulating him, not mm. knowing I'm doing that. I don't know that that's a bad thing in the beginning. Um, you know, we, in any form of artistry, right, we are going to copy those whose style we admire in a way, as a way to eventually find our own voice. Um, you know, if you're literally lifting things, that that would be a problem. Um, if you are, and, and ultimately you're going to have to develop your own voice. It definitely is, I, I can tell you, it will be irritating to re readers. And, and I'll tell you a particular writer that this was a problem with is a, a lot of young writers uh, copy Tarantino, for example, you know, in the late 90s. Uh -huh. um, so where... Um, you know, because he had such a strong voice and, and broke the rules in such a way that everyone everyone wants to break the rules. And so, um, and that certainly can irritate a reader when they recognize that it's so clearly somebody else's voice um, that it, it definitely can have a backlash kind of effect where we'd rather you not try any voice at all um, if you're going to just cop it where we feel you're just copying someone else's voice. But really great writers who have very specific voices and, and styles. Um, I, I think that can be a way to start learning how to develop your voice, to try to, um, I don't, I don't want to say copy, but to, to um, emulate in some ways a, a William Col Goldman style if you admire it as a way to ultimately develop your own voice. You're going to want to ultimately develop your vo own voice because the world probably doesn't need another William Goldman voice out there. Ultimately, what they want is your voice, right? So you, you, it should be a step along the way to find that.